He is not only a philosopher, but also a critic. He really worked as a critic. Probably not everybody is aware of it. Uh, like uh, Wolfgang Schalber, he studied classics and uh, German studies and history of art. He has become uh, very well known due to his writings about Richard Riley. He curated many exhibitions, uh, Orte der Kunst, in 2010. It's probably interesting with respect to the participatory approach, uh, the desire for form on the neoconcretism and the contemporary art from Brazil, 2010. Among other things, it was about Lichia Clark and Helia Otizica. Form not as an end in itself, but also as origin of the desire, the turn to participation and the, the surpassing of the traditional genres are embedded in this. He wrote his doctoral thesis about Kant's critique of judgment. He got the chair for aesthetics and theory at the UDK. Since 1997, he has been a member of the academy since 2003 to 2012. He has been our, he was our director. We are looking forward to listening to your presentation. Please, Robert Kudielka, take the floor. I prefer this corner here. It is called, since the opening of the house, it is called uh, the heart of darkness because uh, and behind me we have the head of uh, the prince elector who was beheaded. So, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, there are many good reasons to worry about uh, the art and the state of art criticism seems to be one of them, though not the most urgent. Certainly, the proliferation of information in TikTok mode is not conducive to the mediation of critical differentiation. The increased power of the art market seems to confirm Niklas Luhmann's assertion that art criticism is merely a parasite in the relationship between work and viewer. And the confrontation with non-Western artifacts brought about by the global market is giving the facultas di judicandi a headache. But perhaps uh, these irritations are also inconsequential or irrelevant in the end. Maybe the critique of art has simply outlived its usefulness due to the historical success of modern art. What is the point? What is the point of art criticism at all? Almost a hundred uh, years ago, when the um, matter first became critical, Baudelaire directly addressed this question in the preface to the Salon of 1846. A quoi bon la critique? What is the point of criticism? After the rather witty remark that criticism can teach nothing to the bourgeois who does not want to paint or rhyme, he also applies this reasoning in all seriousness to art itself. Criticism can teach nothing to art. I quote, since it is its creation from which criticism has emerged, c'est puisque c'est de ses entrailles que la critique est sortie. What a parade. Art as the origin of criticism. Well, the relationship has, first of all, a historical dimension. Of course, there have always been authors, cognoscenti centi connoisseurs, who have argued for the primacy of local or regional traditions, schools, or even particular aesthetic qualities. Not to mention the hierarchy of eminent artistic personalities. But art criticism with the public claim of a binding assessment of works of art did not exist before the 18th century, for it was only with the emergence of a self-confident bourgeois public sphere that a socially unsecured field of activity emerged. Art, due to the disappearance of the traditional support functions of religion, political mission, recognized iconography, and supporting workshop uh, tradition. Art as such. Uh, 
This bare singularity cannot be extrapolated from the old orders of the artes and the attempt of the academies of the type of the Académie des Beaux-Arts to cushion the upheaval by establishing reasonable criteria finally failed at the latest in the middle of the 19th century. The reaction to this development is, of course, not the same everywhere in Europe. While in Germany, the founding of aesthetics as the philosophy of sensual knowledge and Kant's aesthetic ennoblement of the concept of spirit, the Geist, prepared the way for the romantic religion of art and the emergence of the humanities, in Paris, Art uh, criticism actually emerged from the entraille, the womb, or the inner ma makings of art, namely from the exhibitions of the Académie Royale des Beaux-Arts, Diderot's banishment uh, curse, Boucher hors du salon, from 1763 is, in a sense, uh, the birth cry of art criticism and the faint indignation that it was the critics who had to discover the faux pas because the no police, no commissioner barred the delinquent from taking part in the exhibition becomes one is happy to indulge uh, the enlightenment's maturing exuberance. For Diderot's vehemence exposes a constitutional peculiarity of art judgment which later comes through again in Meyer Graf's verdict on the Berklin case or Clement Greenberg's essay Avant-Garde and Kitsch. Those who judge so decisively only seem to distinguish between good and bad art, for this would require a binding yardstick for good art. Bad art is a non-starter, as Clement Greenberg discovered in the late 1980s, when he tried in vain to back up his ideas of high art with a definitive book on bad art. Art is per se good, albeit in highly varying manifestations and degrees, and everything else is simply not art in mostly depressing clarity. The judgment of art is thus a rank on an unsecured terrain, a grown with, overgrown with aspirations and ambitions. It is not simply a misfortunate to err, but rather the normal situation in which the danger of falling is greatest precisely at moments when encouragement seems irresistible. The same implacable Denis Diderot devoted himself two years later with inconceivable devotion to describing the confections of the sugar baker, baker Jean-Baptiste Creuse. Such horrendous fluctuations of judgment are obviously incompatible with the claim of scientific knowledge. Art science therefore usually avoids the judgment of rank. The scientific observation of works of art, well known Ernst Gombrich's offstage, was probably a kind of diversion of art. Founded as a historical discipline and oddly enough almost at the same time as the beginning of modern art, art history has long been able to treat the art of the part as a historical testimony, objectively. A lot of things that have been in the museum have been um, only for zeitgeist. In general, it cannot be ruled out that in matters of art, too, one occasionally arrives more safely by diversions than by direct route. But the bypassing of the question of rank ultimately led to the fact that until deep into the 20th century, art studies could not find access to an art that apparently could not come up with an identity and visual language specific to the time and society. So, if art criticism has not simply been the dissolute ancestor of art studies and henceforth not merely its cheeky sister, 
does not only want to be its cheeky sister, what does it refer to? What is its incentive? What does it cling to? Baudelaire takes, at the end of his instru instruction to the Salon of 1946, a quotation from Stendhal as applicable to all art. La peinture n'est que la morale construite. Art is nothing but constructed morality. And the future author of Fleur du Mal immediately adds that seulement ce mot de morale, this word moral, is has to be understood in a greater sense. Dans un sens plus ou moins libéral. So it is not to be understood as a code of conduct, rather in the meaning of spirit, but entirely without the speculative exaltation and abstraction by the philosophy of subjectivity. Works of art are moral constructs in the sense that they reflect the feelings, passions, and dreams of everyone. Le sentiment, la passion et la reverie de chacun. And critique has, unlike philosophy, to do with this multiplicity, or as Baudelaire says, les faces divers de l'absolu. This is a task that rests at every moment on metaphysics, but it only rests, it only touches, touche metaphysique. This means that the judgment of art generally applies to the individual case, albeit with a general intention that cannot claim any objective basis. In this respect, it is quite similar to the critical constitution of aesthetic judgment re revealed by Kant. But unlike the free play of cognitive powers, the state of mind in front of works of art is not a suspended sensation, but the perception of a work of art whose morality consists in being good that has nothing to do with merely being satisfied or for fulfilling a norm. Good or not go good in art praxis, practice is the ongoing guide to artistic decision making itself and the confidence in the unjustifiable practicability of this distinction is the creative naivete, naivety that Baudelaire considered along with temperament to be the mo temperament to be the most important quality of the artist above all however the apparent effectiveness of the unexplained criteria of good makes one thing clear art critique has not only emerged historically from a changed understanding of art, but also receives its justification from the innermost of the matter itself. It is therefore not surprising that it was poets and writers who gave criticism, art, criti art criti criticism, decisive impulses until, until the early 20th century, after Diderot and Baudelaire and Emile Zola Joris Karl Huisman, Felix Fénéon, Guillaume Apollinaire. Presumably, statistical research revealed that the majority of lesser-known critics also had open or secret literary ambitions. The art of word plays have given voice to the visual arts. But what is the point of art critique instead of writing poems or novels? Certainly, the reassurance of one's own work ethic has sometimes played a role in this, with Baudelaire, for example, the clarification of the term romantic with Zola, the project real realism. But the real impetus, the current challenge, seems to have come from the public. The new system, especially in France, found an audience that wanted to know things like the well-known um, like how to treat art. Uh, 
In Baudelaire's gladly quoted search of the desirable essential characteristic of criticism is made clear whether the romantic flair um, of romanticism is often underestimated or mis misunderstood. Political here does not mean adhering to a party or conviction, but faire de la politique, to pursue politics, to make one's own point of view public. The art critique Thierry de Duve has produced a remarkable reflection on the question à quoi bon la critique following Kant's aesthetics. Apart from the well-known statements, Kant gave a kind of transcendental phenom phenomenology of aesthetic experience. A tendency to commun commun communicate was inherent in it. Despite the lack of an objective basis, judgment was determined by the demand for everyone's consent, which is a subjective um, general opinion, which is not, which is not, which is by no means certain, is that the that it is to be presupposed. On this sidetrack of the critique, um, critique of judgment. Thierry de Duve has come to the conclusion that aesthetic discourse is perhaps more than just a falsetto voice on the edge of the great social hub, namely a form of insertion into a casual, sometimes controversial exchange of views and points of views. Undistorted by prepotent interests and attached certainties. Aesthetics as the transcendental ground of democracy is the title of one of his recent publications. A gentle and shamelessly exuberant thought, art critique, art critique as a propedeutics communication free of domination. You know the author of this quote. The utopian, however, um, to see the contrast of the present situation more clearly the real critical problem of art criti critique today is the resounding success of its subject, which it has partly helped to bring about. Even the intervention of Duchamp, who explicit, explicitly defined his art as a form of denying the possibility of defining art, has not been able to change the fact that the fundamentally uncertain matter of art is now firmly established in modern society. The art of society, as the so sociologist Luhmann explains in his book, is a self-reproducing, in other words, autopoetic system in which the judgment of art no longer plays a critical role. Art of what society, one is declined to ask. Considering the role that Saint-Simon, Kropotkin and Marxism have played in the background of art critique. More revealing, however, is a look at the information that justifies speaking of art as a system. For system theory, the main problem of modern societies consists in the increasing change which urgently requires a reduction of complexi complexity. In view of the rapidly qu growing quantity and diversity of art production, it seems that prominence, market value, and the res result of auctions decide over the rank of artists and their art. Of course, there is a review and preface prose that suggests critical compo um, components with uncovered phrases like important, significant, influential. But, so those, but such individual evalu evaluations are merely a casual sidelight to the actual scientifically critical discourse, discourse that negotiates the style and techniques specific di distinctions, abstract, figurative, constructive, expressive, space-based, time-based, etc. 
in order to arrive at conceptual order such as minimal concept, I, I, AI, EI, NFT art, which are more or less um, well represented by the artists who provide the material, are more or less well represented. One may lament about this development or may um, complain about it. As Barnett Newman did at the end of the 1960s at the, with the Bravura Baudelaire homage for impassioned criticism. But with the appeal, appeal for passion, objectivity, and the courage to be wrong, the increasing speechlessness in the midst of the most heated deba debates about art critique cannot be overcome. In order for art judgment to regain the mode of a binding claim instead of coming up with the assertion of theories and convictions, there is a need for reflection on the elementary particulari particularity of the th thing, of the object, the interpretability of the individual case. Only in this way the first move of the language play can succeed. Je m'y perds is a repeated proclamation by Diderot. My mind stops there, Bassange translates. What art can be is not to be recognized in advance. Questions of essence are not the task of art critique. However, the irritation um, is always um, in, followed by this. For the first application, it is usually immediately followed by the great confusion, the evasion into the kaleidoscopic variety of horizons. With the question, what does, does this mean, comes a tangle of voices, influences, mutations that want to be heard, separated and examined. But interpretation is not the main task of critique. An interpretation can only make sense after the turn that corrects the rash overarching concept. Not what is it, art, but is there something? Is there something or is there nothing? That is the question that lightens the spark that can add the fire to the argument about art and make critique speak again. However, a certain humiliation should not be concealed at the end. The small world facing alluding to metaphysics once again um, emphasizes the initial thesis. No matter how serious and detailed art critique may be, it must accept that its future remains dependent of, on the progress of art itself. Also, if the lecturer may stick himself to this lectern, this may change nothing about the fact that the future of critique has to be read from the bowels of art. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, Robert Kudjelka. After this keynote for, uh, of new models last week in Bonn with Kevin Bassman and Lil Internet Bannock, we were in agreement that the prerequisite for developing anything meaningful is the critical judgment. So I'm more than happy that the potential of the public space has been highlighted, if not reactivated, by Robert Kudielka, with his insistence of the non-interpretability of the individual case. Any questions? Would you allow for any questions? Uh, okay, let's take 10 minutes time. Let's uh, move, uh, let's postpone the p following panel to 11.45. Provided that there are any questions uh, emerging, big question. Probably the one question that uh, 
makes everything fall into place. No one dares to... Well, my question on your thesis uh, that uh, it is always a judgment of rank, that uh, the judgment uh, on a work of art is always a value judgment, I would say. Well, let's uh, state it is uh, effectively a work of art and then we can take the secondary decision whether it says anything to us. So this, uh, so I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that uh, judge, uh, judging anything as art is a uh, value judgment. Well, to to put it flippantly, well, that's how it is being practiced nowadays. The wording of Luhmann. Uh, says it all. It's an autopoietic system. Well, well, we can talk so many um, judgments about the un unavailability of uh, the essence, unhintergebbarkeit. Well, you may always beg to differ, but a judgment on rank, and that's in this word in itself implied that uh, the piece of art is a moral construction, as Baudelaire said, it's not so much in principle about beauty. No, it's not about beauty. It's about something that cannot be explained otherwise and cannot be broken down in anything else because uh, the concept is so far from being good. What does it mean? Let uh, go into any atelier, into any studio, and talk to artists and say, I don't think it's so good. And they would reply, OK, OK, and so on. Well, you don't ask about beauty, let alone art. That's the decisive thing. No artist is really interested in what art is, after all. No, he, he or she does something following a certain criterion. Quite naively, he presupposes this. Uh, this is good or not good. It's not only a formal criterion. It, it, that would be ridiculous. No, it's a criterion of uh, how to act, which implies that you may fail and that there are differences in how good something is. That is a question with which art criticism has to deal. But art criticism will never pass a judgment on what is good art. This belongs to academic uh, seminars, where you can endlessly discuss the concept of art, because Marcel Duchamp foresaw it. Just because art cannot be defined, he triggered this boom to talk about it and to chat and chat endlessly and to quabble about it. That's the basis. Uh, well, the basis for this eternal quabble is uh, its sheer impossibility from seminar thesis uh, back to even down to enormous massive volumes. Uh, you can never tongue in cheek, Duchamp foresaw this uh, without any doubt. Sorry. Well, we have a sore throat, yeah, being artists ourselves. Well, you are spinning out a thought from the 19th century about poets and their participation or their share in literary production of the visual arts. You also spin out uh, a thread uh, or you highlight a model, a model that uh, seems to project a line. But the funny thing about this is, and it struck me, and I stumbled across this, well, that you stick to it. 
you insist on this origin of uh, from the bowels of art, that criticism is born from the bowels of art. But my experience has been that ever since a certain period uh, of the conceptual trends in art, the exact opposite is happening. In other words, that from the linguistic mode of criticism and this uh, game of words and visualities, the piece of art or the work of art only is uh, reborn. Let me mention just one example, an important artist, Marcel Brautas, who at the center of his initial activity in 1963 places a poem under the peinture? What is painting? What is literature? And what is literature? Yes, it's a painting, and what is the rest? The rest is for the idiots that believe in the moon and the black night of theory. So, his intentional gesture that has been so imperative for a whole generation of young artists generates uh, the main pattern no longer from this line that you have spun out, but rather from the opposite. The entrenchment or the enjambement or the non enjambement of these two forms of visuality and text or a model of criticism that is uh, the upside of what you have spun out, uh, which gives birth to the work of art in the first place. A large portion of the concept art follows on these footsteps. Jochen Concept hinted at this. From the linguistic mode of criticism, a new character of the work of art is emerging that uh, turns this relationship upside down, thus uh, releasing an important productive form of uh, criticism bringing it up again. Yes, I would share your view, absolutely. However, my histor uh, the simple historical fact, well, I tried to highlight the simple historical fact that uh, poets and uh, writers uh, developed uh, this criterion, or uh, took it for granted, this criterion, good, a good work of art, uh, a good, this uh, ingenuity that Diderot, for example, shows derives from the fact that uh, he simply considered this to be relevant and important. What he thinks is also relevant whenever describing a work of art by anybody else. That's why it slips uh, through his fingers and again. And that's especially true for his description of the Greuze. But Lehr himself uh, wonders. Why don't you just write poems on works of art? Why not? This is certainly linked uh, to the fact. Uh, closer to the microphone. OK. I think it's clearly linked uh, to the fact uh, that uh, the early um, art of the 19th century cannot be understood uh, from the perspective of uh, genius, of artists as genius, uh, and Flaubert, and uh, this has been demonstrated amply by uh, critics. Uh, it was the response to the reception. The response to reception has been a triggering moment for the production of books. And this is also true for the interrelation between uh, literature and figurative arts. And uh, the opposite thesis, that art criticism can become art itself or is close to the core of art. Well, I would share this view. But what matters most and the most difficult element nowadays is that uh, we do not use only uh, run the risk of losing our language altogether in describing art, but as a society uh, per se. Society runs the risk of losing an understandable language altogether. 
the title uh, in our society is uh, the main concern would be how can we reach a level where we do not simply take up any positions but talk to each other we need to release this cramp that keeps us prisoners, uh, this theoretical rubbish or cramp is, uh, well, we need to free ourselves. I think uh, both art and criticism of art or art critique needs to embark on this journey so as to change things. I love uh, this uh, term, out of the entrailles, the bowels. Th that I think this should also be an objective in this conference. From the inner workings of our belly, no matter whether it's literary or any other expression, expression we have a mountain of butter, we have an overdose of art in all fields and on the other side, on the other hand, in art uh, criticism, we have a verbal and visual incontinence. Uh, so that's my own language game with which I love to work. Uh, I am an art historian. I am active in a variety of uh, minor associations. I have written a doctoral thesis on Proust. Well, I think we could end up with a recommendation, a wonderful expression, entrai, the bowels of uh, art. So uh, quality does not mean qualis qualita, the characteristics. Uh, we always think quality is good. No, there is also bad quality. I think we should take a closer look at bad quality. What are the processes from which something is brought forth? And we should work uh, with our critique to bring forth good things in hyphenated commas. Well, the bad thing. Read Luhmann. At times it's fascinating to see. Well. He describes a situation that we can perfectly recognize, in which we are right now. It's not that uh, he cherishes the hobby of a sociologist uh, and uh, that he simply lunges into his letterbox. No, he describes a self-reproductive system. And one needs to say, to what degree can it go? And what is inconsistent in this whole conception? The whole problem, problem of uh, art criticism today is, well, you need to say it with, uh, even with an evil sideline. It's a problem also of the current situation of art. It's not that uh, with all the high quantity of products uh, that is uh, abounding everywhere globally that, well, that uh, so many good and uh, tenable things, uh, things uh, emerge, what uh, Diderot would uh, entitle with uh, je m'y perds. I get lost in je m'y perds. I don't, I cannot make sense of it. Well, I have to reflect on this. This uh, activates me. It's not always the case. Well, I, for myself, uh, I prefer music uh, criticism much over art uh, criticism because uh, critics of musical performances need to listen to s before they can say anything, unlike other critics. Second, because music is not so open towards uh, this uh, strange way of uh, cultural journalism to which art critique has degenerated in so many formats, uh, or even in, in, on television. Well, I can walk into an exhibition and uh, tell you, okay, well, 
Well, I could say so many things, post-colonial, gender, you name it, and so forth. So you can sign it as if you signed off a report on an adventure, but you do not know what could be seen in this uh, exhibit. So this situation reflects uh, the current state of affairs. Uh, we always uh, approach uh, the individual work of art. C critique itself has started moving in theoretical commonplaces, uh, which are not conducive to art itself. That's why I make an appeal to this unhintergehbarkeit of the individual case, the, the non-availability and non-disposable character of the individual case. Hello. I wrote down two questions, and before forgetting to ask them, please give me the name of this poem who said, who, who's, who talked about literature and art. What was his name? That was an artist. I'm sorry, the interpreter does not understand because the person is not using a microphone. It was a Belgian artist who died, uh, who was born in 1921, and in the year 1976, he died here. He was an artist from Belgium who started out as a poet, and in the 1960s, it, he, he, I wanted to say it in some more detail. And he was a poet, and which is important in, in this matter. I'm sorry. He started out as a poet and then changed in visual art and said, now I'm visual. And um, at this point of the production, there was the poet that I poem that I used in um, an exhibition, and his name was Ma Marcel Portas. And when coming back to your presentation, I want to add something. Thank you so much in advance for your answer. If I can find my answer. A quote for Hugo, how can we philosophers and to enter into a discussion? Discussion as a mode for, um, for our task. The churches that tell me in Berlin, we need to speak. Should we speak? In these critical times, we should support what links us together. And f for me, it, was be an, it would be an honor to enter into con uh, to discussion with you. I think about um, Hugo. And <laughs> the whole, um, all the poets of Victor Hugo that found its way into my library via Hamburg. There is a golden tower in the N NRF, and I mentioned the initial quote. I should add something in this house where I'm also very um, familiar in the visual arts. The section of visual arts tried to um, open a meeting or to exchange, uh, to open a, an exchange about art with, but this didn't work because contemporary literature has a view of visual art that that is so far from what the members actually do or what artists today do at all until maybe the first century of the um, 20th century this was not present at all 
there was a lot of com um, cooperation between France and Germany um, than today, and I think that is very sad, and we also had this experience in this house. But when um, authors, as you may have seen in the actually book market, when they um, when they treat Cézanne and others from Provence that have no idea of contemporary art, not the slightest understanding about it. And that, for me, is also an interesting story that shows that there is a certain, certain link between the arts, especially literature and the visual art. And this link is almost dead at the moment. It's there is no no conversation between these sections. Maybe Eugen Gomorra, who is also kind of a weird member of the literature section, section who says, I am part of the visual art. I'm sorry, I could not hear the speaker. So we pass on to the next question before going into the next panel. Thank you so much for your presentation. But why are you irritated by Newman's system theory? You're not the only one. This process of um, explaining everything in a big um, view There is a friendly irony behind this that says you can, you can be happy that you live in free democratic um, countries where this is possible. You have the this great idea that the individual case is important. Why does anybody do something like this or like that, good or bad? Why can I say something? Newman makes analogies. This is important when um, we enter into dictatorship. And I would say, leave Newman out of the art critique. We do not want to analyze Newman here, but I think that this, when thinking about this little presentation, I read the interview of Luhmann with Wolf Dieter Huber, and there was one part where Luhmann said, yes, this is the case, but I'm not interested in this. Of course, it's important, the, the question of rank. He says, yes, it is there, it is present. But for him, this essential question, which is also essential for the artists, because they also review themselves, um, they re review each other, not only um, in their same style. But when you talk to artists, you notice that they talk about, and also acknowledge artists from a different um, from different fields sometimes they are more critical to those who are who have close works they they critique each other They're, the critique does not only come from the outside but with all this networking there is still this openness um, towards those in your own network and to be able to critique those in your own network. And this is something that Luhmann does not talk about. He describes in a very explicit way the mechanisms that, how could you, how could you say, that are um, uses now in the current um, art public. That is correct. Thank you so much for the questions and the answers, Mr. Budielka. And thank you also 